Welcome back guys to another exciting JLamp bio video. Today our focus is going to be on enthalpy calculations. Now that is a word you may have not heard before. Um, we'll talk a little bit about it in the video. But enthalpy is very, very similar to energy. Um, it just includes some more information about pressure and volume. And also make sure not to confuse this term with entropy, as entropy is the amount of disorder that is present. Here we're focusing on energy. There are three different ways I'm going to ask you to do enthalpy calculations. They're all pretty straightforward. They're maybe a little bit tedious just because you need to make sure to pay attention to the problem in detail. But once you know it, you're going to be in really good shape. By the way, sponsor for this video is Diet Pepsi. Yes, we've made the switch to Diet Pepsi because it's got that great Pepsi taste without all the calories and extra sugar. And I know during this time, I'm not getting as nearly as much exercise as I used to. So I got to cut back on the calories somehow. Diet Pepsi, the one great taste. <sighs> Delicious. Let's talk about our learning objectives for this video. Hopefully by the end of this, you will be able to I'll briefly explain the concept of enthalpy. I don't need a lot of information about it, but just briefly understand it. And then calculate enthalpy in three different ways. So we're going to give you three different ways to be able to calculate it. It's all pretty straightforward, just some simple addition and subtraction, and I think you guys will do just fine. So let's move on. And then we have our vocabulary terms for today. Uh, enthalpy is one, and then the three ways that we're going to focus on calculating enthalpy of a reaction is Hess's Law, enthalpy of formation, and bond enthalpy. So enthalpy is very, very similar to energy. It's just energy plus the product of pressure and volume, but it has very, very similar properties to energy or heat. We've talked about those in joules, and enthalpy is typically in uh, kilojoules per mole. If a reaction is negative, so for example, if we get a value for enthalpy, which is negative, that means we lose energy, so the reaction is exothermic. Energy is being released when H is negative. Okay, If enthalpy is positive, we gain energy, so the reaction is endothermic. So it's very, very similar to how we looked at energy in joules. If it is positive, energy is going into the system, and if it is negative, then energy is leaving the system. So we need to be able to calculate this, and I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a moment. So calculating the enthalpy of a reaction is important. That tells us if it's endo or exothermic, and we can use Le Chatelier's principle with this information. There's a lot that we can do with this, and if you end up taking AP Chemistry, you'll see where all of this stuff plays out. Now, there are three ways that we can do it. The first is what's called Hess's Law, and Hess's Law takes smaller equations that we know the enthalpies for, we know the delta H for, and we combine them and manipulate them to get a larger balanced chemical equation. We can also look at the enthalpy of formation, which is given for each species in a chemical reaction. And then we can also look at bond enthalpy, that is, the amount of energy that's present in each individual bond that is present in molecules in a chemical reaction. So there are three ways to do it. They're all pretty straightforward, so let's dive in. So let's talk about Hess's Law, because this is the one that's probably the most complicated to be able to figure out. But if we know enthalpy values for reaction, for, for small steps in a reaction, we can calculate the known values for, for larger reactions. Hess's Law simply states that the total enthalpy change is the sum of the individual enthalpies that are found in a chemical reaction. So if I take a look here, I'm given two different chemical equations. I'm given CH4 plus 2O2 yields CO2 and 2H2O, and all those are in the gas form. There's also an enthalpy change when we go from gas to a liquid, and you can see that there on the side as well. well we can combine these equations together to get the equation that's down below, where you have uh, methane plus oxygen plus carbon dioxide yields, excuse me, two moles of water that is a liquid. So by kind of combining the two up above, we can get the total enthalpy of the equation. Now because we have one thing on the product side of our first reaction, we have two H2O that is a gas, and it reappears on the reactant side of the second equation, we can cancel those out. And when we combine the equations together, we end up with the equation that's down at the bottom. So it's your job to kind of be able to manipulate and change that chemical equation one way or another in order to get everything to balance out. And then you just simply add the enthalpies together. So you can see here the very first one is negative 802. We would add negative 88. And that gives us negative 890 kilojoules per mole as our delta H. Now this tells you that the reaction is quite exothermic as the change in enthalpy no, I'm not even going to go in and change it. Change in enthalpy is negative, okay? That means that there's a lot of energy that's leaving the reaction here. 
This is one of those things that's just best seen in practice, and you'll see what I mean here in just a moment. Now, there are two other things to consider. The formulas are not just always going to be laid out in a way where you just add the enthalpies together. In some instances, you may need to flip an equation, that is, switch out the reactants and products to get the appropriate things to cancel, or you may have to multiply the whole equation by some number in order to get things to cancel out. Think about it as if you were trying to solve a puzzle, and you kind of have to manipulate some of these things, these equations around in order to get to the answer to that puzzle. So two key things I want you to consider is if you do flip an equation around, i.e. the reactants become products and vice versa, the sign on delta H is reversed, and that kind of makes sense. If a reaction going forward is endothermic, if we were to flip that reaction go the opposite direction, it would become exothermic. So we would flip the sign on delta H if we were to do that to a reaction. Secondly, if uh, for some reason, let's say uh, the bottom part of my the, the last thing I need to get is two CO2, and I, the equation only gives me an enthalpy where it has one CO2. I have to multiply the entire equation by two, then I would multiply my enthalpy by whatever number that is. So you multiply your delta H by whatever coefficients are in your full equation if they do not match your individual enthalpy changes. And as I said, this is better explained in practice. You kind of see how the pieces fit in the puzzle more as you just go through and practice with it more, I promise. All right, folks, so let's see what um, how we can go through and figure out some of these problems using Hess's law here. So the enthalpy of the reaction of the combustion of C to CO2 is negative uh, 393.5 kilojoules per mole. And the enthalpy uh, for the combustion of CO to CO2 is negative 283 kilojoules per mole. It wants to know the enthalpy for the whole reaction. So I'm going to have you guys go ahead and through solve for this. It's just going to be the enthalpy for the entire reaction here. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is the equation we need to get. I always look for what's on one side compared to what's on the other because it helps me make a little bit more sense of it. So if I take a look here, carbon is on the left side of the equation. Well, that's good because it's on the left side here. So we're probably just going to leave that as is. But if I take a look, in the second one here, CO is on the left side, but here I need it to be on the right side. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this equation because I need to get that into my product section. So I'm going to rewrite some of these out just to kind of give us a little bit of clarification. We kept that the same. Let's flip this. So we're going to flip the second one here. So we're going to get CO2 yields one half O2 plus uh, CO. Okay. Now, remember what we said. If something appears on the product side of one and the reactant side of another, we can cancel those out. So I can cancel out CO2 here. And here I have half of an O2 on my product side and, and a full one on my reactant. So if I cancel these out, I'm left with a half of an O2. Let's go ahead and combine these together. So I combine everything that's left over and I see that it matches this. So I know I'm on the right track here. So what I need to do is I'm going to take negative 393.5 for my first reaction. And here, because we flipped our equation, we are going to flip the sign. And then we're just going to add those together. And that's going to give us our final enthalpy of the reaction. And what I'm going to get here is the delta H of my reaction is equal to negative 110.5 kilojoules per mole. Okay, that's how you use Hess's law. It's about manipulating those smaller equations to get them to combine together to successfully get your final equation down at the bottom. Okay, I think I do one more of these. All right, so I'm given three steps here. So this is going to look a little bit more complicated than probably what I did before. It wants us to calculate the delta H for this entire reaction. So I'm just going to look at my steps and try to fit the pieces together as best I can. The very first one here, C2H2 is on my reactant side, but yet I need it on my product side. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that. All right, so let's flip that equation. I'll leave my coefficients as they are for now. Ugh, I don't like that five halves. You see that sometimes. 
but at least I know that that's on the right side here. So if I take a look at this part down here, C is on the left side. Um, I need C on the left side, but notice I need two C here. This only has one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything here and I'm gonna multiply it by two, okay? So what I end up with is two C plus two O2 yields two CO2. Okay, and the last one gives me uh, H2, which is on the left side. I want that on the left side as well, so we're just going to leave that as is. Okay, if we need to make more adjustments, we can. We can always go back and make those adjustments if we need to, but let's see how this all works out. Okay, I'll use a different color pen just to kind of help you help us out a little bit. So now that we have everything kind of put together, let's see what we can get to cancel, because that's kind of the whole goal here. So water on both sides cancels. We have two CO2s that cancel. I've got O2s on both sides. I have five halves here, and I've got two and one half. Well, five halves is two and a half, right? I've got two and a half oxygens on the left as well on the right, so they all cancel. So what I'm left with is 2C plus H2 yields C2H2. And bingo, it's exactly what we were trying to get. So now we need to think about how am I going to manipulate my delta H's? Well, the very first one, remember, we flipped it, right? So this is going to be 1,299.6. That's positive. The second one we multiplied by 2. So we need to take 393.5 and multiply that by 2. So because, again, negative here, so we have negative 787. So remember, we need to take this delta H and multiply by 2. This one we flip. The bottom one there we didn't do anything to, so that actually stays the same. And then we just add all of those together, and that's going to give us our total enthalpy of reaction. And what we get is that our delta H of our reaction is equal to 226.8 kilojoules per mole. And that tells you it's an endothermic reaction. That's how much energy I have to put in in order to get the reaction to go, okay? So just kind of keep those things in mind. Like I said, it's tedious, but once you understand how to fit the puzzle pieces together, this gets very, very easy. The second way we can figure this out is by using the enthalpy of formation. And those are just simply given uh, as compounds. So you're given the enthalpy of each compound that is present in the uh, chemical reaction. And then you just simply take the sum of your products and subtract the sum of your reactants. Be very careful because remember, delta H is in values of kilojoules per mole. So if I have coefficients in my equation, I'm going to need to multiply the coefficient for each species as we go through. Again, better to see in practice, so let's do a practice problem. So here, all we're doing is we're given a full chemical equation here. It asks us to solve for the delta H of the reaction. And again, it gives us the delta H of each species. Notice that there's not one for oxygen. So uh, elements or elemental substances... Uh, do not have a delta H value, okay? So just something to kind of keep in mind here. If you don't see it, you can assume that it's zero because I'll always give you the information on the table. You'll never have to memorize any of this. Do remember that this is the sum of the product minus sum of reactants. So I just plug my numbers in and solve. So my products here, H2O is negative 241.8. It has a coefficient of six, so I must multiply that value by six. I'm going to add to that 4 times NO, and I'm going to subtract 4 times whatever NH3 is, negative 46.1. Okay, don't have to flip the signs, don't have to do anything. Just plug those numbers in and solve. And as a result, delta H of the reaction is negative 923.2 kilojoules per mole. So again, key thing here, products minus reactants, really straightforward to do that. Just make sure you also include your coefficients of your balanced equation if necessary. So the very last way that we go through and calculate enthalpy is by using the enthalpy of each bond in a chemical species. They're called bond enthalpies. Um, reactants break apart, so that takes in energy, and products are formed, so they release one. So this one's a little bit tricky, simply because most stuff that we've talked about is products minus reactants. In this case, it's reactants minus products, so be extra careful here, okay? Reactants minus our products 
Very, very important here. It's also important to keep in mind the, the coefficients and the number of bonds. So in this instance, we don't even need, we need to know more than just what chemical we are, we're looking at. We also need to know the Lewis structure of it as well, because that tells us whether things are single bonded or double bonded, as well as how many bonds there are total when we're looking at doing bond enthalpy. Let's do a practice problem and we'll call it a day. So we need to consider the reaction shown here, and we're using bond enthalpy. The way you know that is it, it gives you, <laughs> gives you bond enthalpy. So remember that this one's a little bit different. So this is reactant minus product, okay? So I think something that's really important for us to do here is to draw out the Lewis structure for each of these, and that's gonna help us do our math. So the first one we're gonna look at is CH3OH. So again, um, if you need a little bit of help, Refreshing Lewis structure. I have videos on that. You can always contact me. CH three O H. We talked a little bit about how like certain chemicals, especially organic chemicals, they're built the way that um, they're written out. So that can be very helpful here. We've got oxygen. Now it's double bonded here to satisfy the octet rule. CO two. and H2O. And again, you'll see why it's important to draw these out because again, we need to know whether they're single bonds, double bonds, etc. Okay? So I'm going to get the, the total bond enthalpy for each species just to kind of help us out here. So if I look at this one here, I have one, two, I'll use a different color pen for this. I have one, two, three, CH bonds, so that's going to be 3 times whatever CH is, 413. I have one CO single bond, that's 358. And I have one OH bond, that's 463. So if I add all those up together, I'll get the bond, uh, the, the enthalpy for the entire chemical, which is really easy to do. So what I end up with, and I'll write this down here, is 2,060. Okay. Now, you still have to consider that coefficient. There are two of them, so we multiply that by two. Okay. So again, we're adding reactants, subtracting products from that. Here we have an O2. That's nice and easy because that's 495. Um, I'm going to also multiply that by three. And now we subtract our products. I've got two CO double bonds here. So that's going to be 2 times 799. Okay. And remember, I got a coefficient of 2 there. So we're going to subtract 2 times uh, 799 times 2 is 1,598. And adding H2O. So I've got two of those HO single bonds. So that's 2 times 463 which, and again, coefficient here. So that's four times, and two times 463 is 926. So now I have all my bond enthalpies. I just do my math and solve. So my delta H of my reaction is negative 1,295, and again, kilojoules per mole, which tells you that's quite exothermic because the delta H value is very negative, okay? So again, just a variety of different ways we can calculate bond enthalpies in order to be able to determine if a reaction is endothermic or if it is exothermic. All right, guys, that's all for our learning objectives for today. So hopefully you guys have met these, and uh, I really appreciate your hard work this year. So thank you so much for all that you do, and we will see you guys next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.